in 2009, um, when the, uh, the, the mixtape, and, and there was a period where I, I think around that time you were kind of like, you know, is this something that's going to work for me or not? Um, what is it that got you through? How, how'd you, how'd you work through that? Yeah, I, it's tough to say exactly what it was. I think it, it was hard work. It was, it was discipline. It was knowing that if this doesn't work out, then I will have to get a nine to five. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to do no. that. I really don't <laughs> want to do that. And it was, it was working with Ryan and putting everything into the music. And, you know, for, I mean, leading up to that point, I think that you have to look at my track record. I had always wanted to get sober. I could never get sober. I was ne I couldn't make music while I was under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Finally got sober in 2008, got out of rehab and was like, all right, this is it. I've wasted years of my life. And if this is going to work, it has to work now. There's no alternative. And I met somebody that had the same dedication as me, that put everything into the music, everything into the craft and didn't go out, didn't really have many friends. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. We only hang out with each other. <laughs> no, but somebody that, that wasn't going to, you know, be like, you know, I was up until that point, I was making music with people that were constantly putting their priorities into getting cooler people, right. getting, no, not at all, yeah. getting, um, getting loaded or, or chasing women or whatever. And, right. and that's what I did for a long time. And it didn't, it, it led me to being broken and rehab and moving back into my parents' house, yeah. which is awesome. But, um, <laughs> I, I, I wanted a career and, and Ryan was somebody that had this, the same discipline yeah. and, and sacrificed everything. So as you're, as, as you're sacrificing everything to, you know, to kind of make, you know, make, make the music, um, did you have a, did, did you have a sense of, where, where you guys were going, or were you just trying to make the best music you could and let the chips fall where it I had no idea um, at all. I, I, you know, I had known Ben pre-rehab, and then I knew for a few years, and then I knew Ben after rehab, and there was, um, you know, I think when he got back, I was finishing up college, there was this sense of working every single day. Um, and I was simultaneously working on a different project that I had been working on for a few years. So there was this kind of, you know, you're you're getting to know somebody. You're you're putting in a lot, a lot of work. Um, I think any musician would empathize. You put you put your heart and soul, your time into something that you're just crossing your fingers ends up doing something for you because you're sacrificing everything else. <clears throat> and I think it took a little a little while before it became clear to me who he was going to be. Um, and I think that the first indications of that was with um, the song Other Side mm -hmm. off of that mixtape. Right. And I think, you know, I had known his music before us working together, but I think for whatever reason, that song, the way it came together, the way that he did it, the message that was in it was just, it embodied so much. It was real. It was a story nobody was telling you know, from like an MC perspective, it was just hungry. It was just somebody who was dying to be on the mic and to say something. Um, and that was clear, I think, to anyone that heard it. So to see the reaction um, and to get a glimpse as well as, you know, in the social media world, what your capabilities were from your parents' basement with no money um, and how real those capabilities were, were becoming clear quickly. Yeah. And I think from there, it was just small chunks of, other pieces of art that spoke to people that started building on top of each other, and that was kind of the foundation. 